uh, I don't have anything to share about the president's speech as it relates to that particular question that you have. Uh, but we, you know, we want to always, uh, always be sure that we left, lift up the families who have lost their loved ones in that way. All right, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, they're refusing to comment on whether President Biden will even mention the murder of Lake and Riley at the hands of an accused mm -hmm. illegal migrant during a State of the Union address tonight. Yeah, for more, let's welcome in Florida Congressman Brian Mass. Good morning to you, Congressman. What do you expect to hear from the president's address tonight? And do you think he mentions Lake and Riley? I don't think he mentions Lake and Riley. He doesn't have a history of honoring families of the fallen. We can look at that all the way back to the the families of the Afghanistan withdrawal, of which I'm bringing a guest from the the one of the the parents of the lost in the Afghanistan withdrawal. Um, so he doesn't have a history of that. And what I expect to hear is him uh, totally washing over uh, the failures that he's bringing to America. It's not the American people that have failed. It's what he's doing to Americans with the border. Certainly no surprise there. He's going to say they're working to secure it, not all the things that they have been doing. He's going to try to say, oh, inflation is at these super low levels, not every place that he brought it to and, and what's been going on with the prices for people at the pump and the grocery store. He's going to try to paint everything as a victory, which is the opposite of what it really is. Yeah, I think we could see either a very long speech because the president will try to prove that he's up to the task, or we could see like a 22-minute Nixon-esque State of the Union speech just to try to limit the opportunity for Joe Biden to uh, to embarrass himself in front of a huge national audience. But you, Congressman, have a history at the State of the Union. Uh, you were a guest of former President Obama in 2011 after you were injured serving our country in Afghanistan. You sat with Jill Biden and Michelle Obama. We've got some video from that. Again, this is more than a decade ago. Now you're serving our country in the House of Representatives. Um, how big an impact did that have on you being invited? To the State of the Union. Yeah, you know, when I was I was still a member of the military at that point, I was a, a patient in Walter Reed Army Medical Center, uh, and you know one of the things that I remember specifically from that night is you go down there and maybe you've never been to the floor of the House of Representatives before, as I had never been. And, mm. and I'm there and I'm looking down at the gallery at all of these these representatives and senators and Joint Chiefs of Staff, and it's a big deal because d divested of politics. The individuals on the floor are expressing their gratitude for your service. For me, it was, you know, they were expressing their gratitude for my service or whoever else is there, what their piece of the, the puzzle is, whether they're uh, people that, that, that didn't accept the president's invitation this year, uh, the family of Nalvani or uh, the wife of, of Zelensky, those people didn't accept it. But people that go there, they are recognized across the country and across the, the floor by our leaders for something that they have done. And it's a big deal in that respect. Yeah, something else I want to talk about with you. So we know a large-scale operation on human trafficking in Florida led to 228 people being arrested, 21 of them being illegal migrants. A sheriff says he found evidence of these illegals using federal flight vouchers provided by the DHS in order to aid human trafficking. After the report that we saw yesterday about Biden flying 320,000 illegals into the U.S., what's your reaction to this? Uh, my reaction is to challenge Americans across the country. Everybody that's watching your program, I would ask you to do this. Go to your local sheriff's office. Call your local sheriff's office or your local jail, because I've done this, and ask them, hey, how many illegal immigrants do you have locked up right now? How many of them do you expect will be released from their ICE holds because ICE is not going to take custody of them? In one of my counties, we have uh, about 33 as of the last number that I saw. And of that number, they'll tell you what those individuals are charged for that ICE is not going to hold. And you'll find dozens that are charged with uh, DUI. You'll find dozens that are charged with various sexual assault type claims. You'll find other ones. And you will be amazed at what ICE will not hold and pick up. And this came to fruition, if I could save this for one minute. Uh, last week, we had somebody charged with rape from Washington County, Oregon, that was locked up in Martin County, Florida. Mm. ICE was not going to pick him up, and the local sheriff in Washington County, Oregon, would not pay for the extradition. I actually called the, the local U.S. representative there, Susan Bonamici, asked her if she would pressure her sheriff to get this guy extradited so he wouldn't get released into my community. I used the term illegal immigrant, and her only response to me was not about the rape charge and the fact that there was a victim in her community. It was, Brian, we don't refer to these people as illegal immigrants. We refer to them as undocumented citizens.
That's what her concern was about wow. this. Not that a rapist was going to go out into the community. Yeah, that is wow. abhorrent. And this sanitizing of the English language will stop, hopefully, in November when a Republican named Donald Trump wins the White House. He is our nominee. Um, Congressman, just a quick one for you. Uh, our new House Speaker, Mike Johnson, your colleague, apparently addressed Congress and said no heckling tonight. Do you expect anyone? Marjorie Taylor Greene did it last year. Do you expect any of that tonight during the State of the Union? I wouldn't even call it heckling. Look, this is an opportunity for the president to come and speak. He has the opportunity to speak truthfully. And if he doesn't, he's going to hear about it. And none of us should say that we were elected to become uh, bashful individuals. If the okay. president is lying to the American people on the biggest stage that he's going to have, where he has traditionally come out and, and, and whitewashed everything that's going on there, then it's not going to be accepted by us. Would, would you take part in that? And, and that's the term that Mike Johnson used, heckling. Would you take part in that if you thought Joe Biden yeah, was, not, listen, was not telling the truth? If he lies, he's going to hear about it from me. He's going to hear about it from others. We're not going to sit there and cheer him on just by tradition. Mm -hmm. All right, Congressman, we appreciate you being with us this morning. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.